Hello, everyone. Um, we are excited to have you here today. My name is Mary Beth. I am co-founder here at Materio, and um, we're going to go through a basics demo. So we had some requests in the bookings for today for just very straightforward things like project setup, templating, timeline and task, invoicing. So what I'm going to do is attempt to help you learn how to set up a project um, and utilize the basics of Materio in the next 30 minutes. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. If you have questions while I'm going through this, be sure to drop them in the chat or unmute and um, just ask here. So let's get going. All right, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. We're going to work, walk through just sort of also the basics of you know, the foundational things in navigation. This should be pretty straightforward. I usually don't explain this, but to be very thorough, this is your project dashboard. Whenever we say project dashboard, we mean right here. It's automatically going to land on your active projects. You'll see in the middle here. On the top left, you have leads. So you can put a form embedded on your website and bring in leads uh, through Materio here. And then you have your active projects. And then once projects are finished, maybe you've lost the job or you didn't win the job or um, they're just in a standstill, you can always move them over to archived. Um, and so this is the archive projects. It's going to be archive leads as well as archive projects. And you can always reopen those really easily if needed. So again, if you have a project that yeah, the, the client's really holding out for a while or trying to make a decision, you can always put it over into archive projects to free up some space in your account. Um, and again, easily bring that back. And then um, your actual projects are going to be listed right here. There's going to be estimates and live projects. The real difference between an estimate and a live project is that a live project allows you to track change orders and it actually happens automatically. I'm just going to prompt you. And so you can live an estimate for, you know, pretty much the whole project if you'd like to, especially as a designer. You can really not worry about that for now. Um, it's sort of a, a thing that's just lived in material for a long time. And then on this project, you'll see here, this is where you can edit the name and address, copy this project, which is how you can uh, right now make a template. And then also this little bell means that you are on the project or following the project, which just means you're going to get daily briefings about it. You're going to get notifications about it um, if things change or happen. And so that just means like you are on the project. You will notice there are things in my account down here that I do not have the bell turned on for. That was created by my team members. Um, so I'm not on that project. I don't get notifications about that project. Um, but I can still access it because it's within my organization. And then over here on the right, we have our uh, task list. This is your personal task list. So I can add um, I can add in a task here if I like. Um, and then again, I have task I'm following. So this is going to be task that, you know, if someone on my team is doing it and I want to, you know, be aware of that task, um, it'll show up right here and I can kind of, I can manage it, but also they would manage it and I would be notified about it. Um, I know we just had someone join in. If you have questions, you know, you can drop them in the chat or unmute yourself and, and share and ask any questions that you like. I'm just sort of running through the basics right now. Um, and then we're actually going to next dive into actually creating a project. So we're going to take this from the top. Um, again, hopefully this part is pretty straightforward, but we're just going to go through it. So I'm going to hit new project. And then this is where I'm going to name the project. Some people like to get really creative with the names. You know, if it's like the shady, uh, shady gray renovation or whatever it is, you can come up with a cute name, but also this is how your team is going to find it. So you may just want to call it the last name of the client and some of the, um, the address. So just like this, we'll just say this is the chow, um, addition. And, you know, it's it's 100 Russell. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and hit next. And then this is where you can put the project address, the full address. This is important because once you get to ordering, um, you might want to ship things to the address or if you're sending a labor PO and you want the address of the project to be on there. So this is handy when it comes to order ordering or coordinating things. So I'm going to put 100 Russell Street and then I'm going to do, you know, if there's a unit, I can do that. And then I'm going to put the city and the state um, and the zip code. And again, this is just important to do. You can always add it later, but it's nice to do it now. And then optionally, I'm going to put the budget here. Now, if I've had this project come through a lead, there will be a budget that's already uh, suggested here. In this case, I didn't. So I'm just going to type in the budget. And again, this is a guideline, so it's not going to restrict you from adding more scope than this. It's really just to have that as you move through the project. And then um, what pricing structure? We've actually moved this uh, to be upfront. 
um, because we're working on actually launching templates inside of the scope builder. And so we're uh, going to get rid of the scope builder and bring in templates. And so now we're starting to ask pricing structure questions when you start the project. So if you have a, a junior person on your team or an admin person on your team, who is the person that maybe kicks off projects, make sure that they are aware of the type of fee structure that you have, you know, and as simple as a project-based fee or baked in markup. Now markup is what's common for designers. So we're probably going to use this one. And again, this is gonna be a general, you know, estimated markup across the board. You may have vendors where your markup is 100%. You ha may have vendors where your markup is 60%. You will change that as you add in actual product, um, but this is going to be kind of a baseline when we're trying to decide what is this project, you know, how much money am I going to make on this project and what is it going to cost for my clients? So we're going to type in 100 and then hit next, and then we are selling it retail to our clients. Um Oh, no, wait, sorry. I'm buying wholesale and I am charging sales tax here. So this is just, do you generally buy wholesale or do you generally buy retail? And then are you charging tax to your clients? And again, those are kind of the defaults. And then anybody else at your company that needs to be on this project, this is a quick and easy way to just add them in without you having to go back and do it later. So add anybody who you know is going to be responsible and on this project. All right. So we've gone through that. I hope that gives some clarity around um, how you set things up. Now, when you land in a project in material, you're going to have a, a big empty space because most of the material project is, is um, inviting you to add a visual here. Now you can go ahead and upload floor plans here if you have them. You could upload load hand sketches if you have them. Whatever assets you have at this point, you want to add them here. Now, you may be at the point where you actually just have some photos, you just have some information, and you're really starting to think about what the project it is. In that case, I'm actually going to create a board, and I'm going to add some images uh, from my computer that I took of this project. So let's see if we can find some images. I actually don't have any any examples in front of me, but I'm just gonna throw these on here. We'll pretend like these are existing. And, and in fact, they're kind of renderings of an existing space. So that works just fine. Um, and I'm gonna go ahead and place these on the board. Um, and you can kind of arrange them how you like. These happen to be um, very long. So we'll put them in here. Um, and so this is really just a way for you to put photos in. I'm not gonna include this one. And this one I don't need either. Um, okay, so let's just say that I have, you know, two photos from before. I also might want to come in and I might want to add some text describing what this is. Um, this is the view from the living room. And you can add in a bunch of notes here. You know, you could say more about what this is. This is a view of the custom wall. We're going to make a custom wall here. And so you can kind of uh, make this look better. You can add backgrounds to it. You can start to add other inspiration images here. I'm just kind of showing you what you can do if you don't have floor plans at the very beginning. So we're going to save this as current. Uh, well, actually, that's a horrible name. Sorry, y'all. We're going to call this existing conditions. Um, and you could call it before, whatever you might want to do. So we're going to save that. So now we have our board here. Now, we don't have to do that. We can skip and just start outlining. That's definitely an option. But I wanted to show you that you could jump right into just adding some photos here, adding notes about the project. Maybe you've just had your initial consultation and you want to document those notes here. You absolutely can do that. Um, and like I mentioned a minute ago, as we were going through the fee setup, in the near future, we will actually be getting rid of what we call the scope starter. That is because I'm very excited about this. We have um, built in templates, like where you can just insert rooms at a time uh, coming to Materio in the next uh, hopefully week or two. We're doing internal testing on that right now. So that is coming really soon. But for now, I'll walk you through the scope starter. Um, we did also recently update the view of all of the boards, I um, mean, excuse me, all of the visuals. So you can now have a, you know, a big grid view. We can come in, um, let's upload, I'm gonna upload a little bit of content here. We're gonna add in, maybe we add in all of these. Um, and of course this isn't a whole set. 
for some reason I need to find the whole set. But now I have a floor plan here so we can get to work on what's going to be, you know, in this project. Um, so I'm going to use the scope starter. And you know what, before that, because there was a question about timelines and tasks, and I don't want to miss out on this because we only have 30 minutes, let's go through really quickly how you can use the timeline from the very beginning. So I'm actually going to use a template that I have on my account. If you're relatively new to Materia, you should have at least two templates on your account. If you don't, you can always reach out to our support team and we can add them to your account. Um, but I'm going to use a template and I'm actually going to use my design template here. So I'm going to plug this in. And the reason I want to do this even before I start really doing much else on the project is because I can utilize Materia's work phases and plan tasks while I'm starting the project. So while I'm starting to think about concepts, while I'm spelling out what goes into the project, I'm probably going through you know, client onboarding, site analysis, and even now I'm in the concept development phase. So you want to make sure that you use these templates as early as possible, um, as soon as you start the project. Because again, if you have an admin person on your team and they're trying to keep up with things like sending a retainer or sending a contract, getting things signed, you can do that and manage those tasks from here. So we have client onboarding as a work phase. And inside that, over here on the right, you'll see that we have some plan task. That was all built into my template. And I just inserted the template. And now I can start to use that right off the bat. So if your team has, you know, SOPs or kind of standard practices that you want to follow, this is a great way to build it into Materio and have your team have something to reuse every single time. Now, we can always customize this. Like, let's say in this specific one, there was a, maybe there was a client phone call that needed to happen earlier on. Maybe it was on the first and everything else, you know, is later. So this is an example that was on the first, so it's overdue because we're not, we're on the 13th now, um, but that can happen. We can say that was done in progress, et cetera. Now the template's gonna have these unassigned. We'll just throw these onto the people that we know are responsible for this. Um, and so you can easily assign them each time that you have the template and you can easily go in and choose when you want these uh, items to be due. And um, so this is gonna set up your project for success because it allows you to uh, have the things that you know that have to be done, but make it custom to this project, add in anything specific, and then assign it to your team. Um, so this is really, really helpful to understand just that we have work phases, and then inside the work phases, we have those planned tasks. Now, again, if you have one-off task, like as we get into the project and, you know, things start happening and you need someone to make a phone call or you need them to return something or order a specific sample, you can always say, you know, um, order sample of uh, the velvet for the living room sofa. Um, and so, you know, or from a specific vendor, whatever it is, the point is you can have these one-off tasks and you can uh, easily bring those in. Now, if you add the task, the default is it's going to assign to you. You just quickly assign it to someone else. Now, any task in Materio, you can click on it and you can add in more information. So in this case, I may have an image, I may have a return label, I may have a hand drawing that I did that I need a drafts person to put into CAD. This is where you can add attachments that are related to that task. You can assign them here as well. You can add notes and you can also be requested uh, to be notified. You can request to be notified when this is completed. So if I want Emily to let me know or the material to let me know that Emily has completed this task, I just put that I want to be notified here. Um, and you should even be able to have multiple people be notified. So if there's something that you're waiting on to get done, this is really important because it just lets you know that thing was completed that you needed to be notified about. Now you can do the next thing, right? Now I can actually let the client know, or now I can actually make a decision when that sample comes in. Um, and so you can do that. And um, if you have any task assigned to you, they're going to show up here at the top um, widget under my task. If I reassign this to someone else, it's going to clear off of my list and it's going to go to that person. So this little widget at the top here is your task on this project specifically. Um, and then you can always view everything that your team has to do. Um, and you can also enter new task here as well. So if you're thinking I'm doing something, I'm not on the timeline, I just need to add a task quickly. You can do that from anywhere in the project. All right. 
that was a very brief overview of how you can kind of use timelines from the beginning. I think it's super important to set up um, a template there. I know there was one question for someone who booked a call today about setting up a template. So I will say that you, you I'm not sure if you meant project template, timeline templates, or both, all of the above. Um, but if I reset this timeline and I actually just create a new timeline um, and I start to just type the phases and I add in, you know, all the things um, that I want. My brain is really tired today, y'all. Um, you know, I don't know. I'm I'm training. <laughs> Let's put that in. Um, once I build out this timeline and I specify everything that goes in it, I can actually go to the gear here and do save new template and I can name this template. So you can come in and you can set up exactly how your business operates and you can think about what you want to have, you know, be in your standardized templates and you can save a new one. So you don't have to rely on materials templates. Those are there if you want them. And then you can also update the existing template. So let's say you're testing out a new template that you created on one project, you're using it, you've started to learn some things about that, the way that template works, and you go to start a second project, you can insert the template, make the adjustments and update the new template moving forward. So it gives you some flexibility on learning from what you're doing and adding that new template in there. Okay, so now we're gonna hop into starting a project um, and how we can kind of get really specific. Like I mentioned, templates uh, are coming very soon, or I should say kits that ladder up to templates. So we are gonna have this concept of inserting a bathroom and all the things that go into the bathroom that can be uh, pricing on those. They can even be suggested products if you use a lot of the same products. So that is coming very soon. Um, maybe even by the time I'm demoing next week, we'll have that in front of everybody. Okay. So when I'm starting a project today, um, you're going to walk through the scope starter, and this is going to allow you to start to think about what is in this project, right? And you're going to know the project pretty well, most likely if you're the one setting it up. But, you know, again, there may be someone more junior who, who wasn't the one who did the drawings. Um, and so you can always zoom in on the plans, take a look at what you're seeing. If you're, don't, if you're not familiar, okay, we've got kitchen, we've got bedroom, bath. Uh, half bath, living room, pantry. I mean, we've got a lot of stuff in this house. Um, and then you can always come in and custom add things in. Like we have the rear foyer, we have the sunroom. We can add in custom rooms. And then we're going to start to think about the categories of work in this project. Now, if you're a design firm, you're obviously going to be adding in design services as a, as a category. Even if you're flat fee or hourly, it doesn't matter what your fee structure is. We want to have design services in there. And then we're going to start to think about things probably more from either doors and windows or even electrical down. That's going to be more of the design oriented things. If you're working on specifying any building you know, materials or, or work, construction, you can definitely use those, um, but you may be helping select doors and windows, you know, interior doors, exterior doors. We're doing electrical um, sconces, chandeliers, et cetera, um, plumbing. Now, plumbing and other things, other categories where we can kind of guess, we're going to go, okay, it, you have a kitchen, you have plumbing, so you have potentially all of these items, right? Uh, same for bath and, and half bath. Um, and so a lot of these categories are going to break down and sort of help you think about what's going in each location. Um, and then some are going to be more basic, like living room furniture. We, you know, we're not going to get super creative there for you because that's going to be custom and that's going to be, you know, catered to the space that you're in. But that is where the templates that we're uh, working on are going to be super handy. So I'm going to hit next. And this is where I can optionally choose to budget per location or per category. So we set a project budget at the beginning, which was this 500,000. This is where you can optionally say, okay, you know, I wanna set a budget for each location. And so you can kind of think about what we have to spend in each room. Um, and so you can kind of spell this out and you can kind of see where you're, where the money's going, which is nice. Cause you're like, all right, are we gonna have the budget that we need to do the furniture that I want or the lighting or whatever it is. Um, and look, we've got plenty of room uh, left over so we can even increase those budgets and go back through if we want to. Um, but it also just shows, okay, if this was what I was thinking per room, we're good. So I'm gonna hit next. And then I have got my scope started. 
All right. Now, when it comes to setting up a project, you are not done there because as you know, every project is custom. You're doing a lot of specific things on that project. But this is where we really want to start to think about planning upfront. So I know it's easy to jump into designing things and jumping into concepts, but this is where as a business owner and as a designer, we must step back and go, okay, how can I ensure that I'm making profit on this project? How can I ensure that I'm not missing any information? I'm not missing any details so that when I send that first proposal of what it's going to take, I'm being really, really accurate. So first things first, I'm going to add in my design services. Um, I am going to actually, um, it's not a selection, so I'm going to uncheck that. I'm going to call it labor and I'm going to hit save. Now it is going to have those default markups on it. So we'll just get rid of those. Um, but what I do want you to think about here, is even like let's, we're going to do flat fee as an example. Let's say that I've done some math and I want, I want to walk away with $40,000. Like I want $40,000 to be my fee. Well, obviously out of that $40,000, some of that is me paying my team and paying their hourly rate and or paying their salary. So you're going to do some math to figure out what that is. But what I want to show you is let's just say you're like, okay, I want to, I want to, I assume my team is going to cost 15,000 to do this project. And at this point, I'm really guessing because I haven't even spelled out everything else. Um, but let's just say, I think it's going to cost me $15,000. But what I really want to do is I want to make, we're going to change the number to 50. I really want to make $50,000 or, or take in $50,000 on the fee. I'm not making that, excuse me. I want to bring in $50,000 on this fee. What Material is going to do when you type in that number and you hit enter, it's going to calculate a markup for you. Now, of course, that seems like an astronomical markup, but we all know that outside of that, we have overhead and other things that are going to go into that. Um, but what I'm trying to show you is that you want to land at a $50,000 dollar amount for your client. But on the back end, you do want to be thinking about what it's going to cost you and your team for your hours, your team's hours and time to actually do this design fee. And as we are tracking our time and building out the project and doing things, we are going to track our hours to that design fee. So I'm just going to show you now. I'm going to go ahead and do um, this project. I don't know. Let me refresh. Usually it should load on the project. Yeah. So the project's there. And I'm going to say that I'm actually estimating the project. Um, I'm going to track it to design services just as, a, as an example, and I'm going to start the timer. So now as I track this time, Material is going to match it to that design fee line item. So later I'll show you what that means. All right. So now we're going to start spelling out what goes into this project. Um, Windows, great example. Let's actually add um, a location. We're going to call this location throughout um, or general because you could just leave it blank and leave them at the top. But I do think that it's important if there's something that goes throughout the house, that's totally okay. Let's just name it. And let's do a window. Um, we're gonna do, and we're gonna do 40 inch uh, window um, specifically. And then we're gonna go ahead and we're just gonna tag everything on the plan that matches that window. So all of these windows around the entire house, um, that are the same, that one's different. We're gonna mark all the ones that are the same. Those are existing. Okay, and we're gonna do these two. All right, so assuming that we know in the design that all of those are the same width and height and design, we're gonna just tag them. And that's great because now we know that we have nine of those windows and let's just say they are you know, 2,500 each and then I wanna have a markup on top of that. Now you may not have your markup on windows obviously as a designer, but we're specifying that and we're planning that out. That's just an example of how you can take something across the board and put it into an item. Um, now, when it comes to things, we're going to go through each marker style. Let's do um, let's do tile because that one is always good for everybody to understand. So let's do this bathroom here. We're going to call this, it's the half bath. We'll call it the half bath. We got the floor tile here. We're going to estimate that we're spending $8 a square foot on tile with 100% markup and a tax. So we're just going to assume it's $16 a square foot for my client. And then we're going to go ahead and mark the plan. So we're going to use the area tool. And in this case, we haven't set our scale yet because we just uploaded the plan. So we're going to do that together. I don't know. There we go. Get that off. All right. So I'm going to zoom in and you can, to set your scale, you can find anything on your floor plan 
that has an exact dimension. Um, I'm just going to use this room as an example. So this room is seven feet. So I'm going to type in seven. Now, if it's seven foot, six inches, whatever, you can type that in. I'm going to do save. And I'm going to do this for the project default. That means that every plan page I upload from here on out will take this scale default. Now, you can always go in and customize the scale if you upload an elevation, or you can always just do it for this page. But I generally like to do it for the default first, especially if you have a large set of drawings here. Um, so then we're going to go back in. We're going to zoom in. And we're going to draw the area here. So an area is just going to be a rectangle. So if there's ever a time where you have just a very, you know, exact shape, um, it's just going to be an exact shape and it's going to make it easy. So I'm going to say, okay, and then I've got 10% waste on that and I'm going to hit save. Now let's say that there's a time where you also have maybe something a little bit um, less normal. So in this case, the floor tile in the laundry, we're going to say it's also eight. And then we're going to mark our plans with the polygon tool. So because this room is not just um, a standard shape here, we're going to use the polygon tool to outline that shape. And again, hit 10%, hit save. All right, so those are uh, two of the options. The last one is going to be the vault shower, the shower wall tile. All right, so this is a material. We're going to hit save, and then we're going to mark the plans. And in this case, we're going to use the linear foot tool. So we're going to do line line, 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 hit enter. And then I'm going to do the height of the wall. So I'm going to assume that the tile is going up nine feet and that the waste is 10%. So again, you'd have to know the height of your ceiling there. We're going to go ahead and hit save. And now I have the wall tile um, drawn out, even though I don't have an elevation. So this is really helpful because what it allows me to do is plan very specifically for what potentially needs to be ordered for this project. So when I go and start sourcing materials and I'm looking at tile and whether or not it's sold by, you know, X quantity by the box, I will know how much I need to order to fill this space. Um, and this is also how we can be very specific about what we are uh, placing into the rooms. Another thing I want to show you, again, it may or may not become uh, obsolete when we have the templates in the next few weeks, but something to know is that if you're sort of spelling all these things out and you're actually not sure what number to type right here, like let's say again, you're a junior person and you're told to go mark all the floor plans and, and put tile budgets in, what you can do is select a placeholder product to fill in that estimate. So I could go in and I could select, um, maybe it's the most recent tile that we used on a project, um, or it's a certain you know vendor that we know that I know we use a lot. In this case, it's actually putting that in as a placeholder. You can see this product right here. It's kind of grayed out. It says estimating placeholder, and that means that this product is calculating uh, the dollar amount here. So it'll even, you click on it, it's going to show you the breakdown, what it costs, what the markup is, what the tax is. So you can use that to populate these budgets before you go and send a proposal. Now, this is not going to present that specific tile to your client. It is simply allowing you to budget uh, using this amount. All right. We are already at 30 minutes, so I'm going to go a few more minutes longer because I feel like we haven't even gotten to all of the invoicing and things yet. So we've added in some items. We now know how to use the markers. Uh, you can get very creative with those markers and use them in lots of different ways. People like to outline furnishings. Um, you can. I, one thing I will say, if you're doing furnishings, as an example, let's just say for the sofa in the living room, you want to highlight it because you want it to look um, really nice you know, and, and clean and clear for your client. I can outline this using the polygon tool, of course, the sectional is not actually 43 square feet, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit save and then I'm going to change this to one and then I'm going to change it to unit. Um, and now this is one sofa. So you can use the markers in a really creative way to outline things on your project, to communicate to your client, to communicate to your team. Uh, but you can play around with those units. The markers, uh, people have done really fun things with the markers. So a lot of designers like to outline their furniture in that way, or even like if you have a curved sofa, it's like lots of little dots. So feel free to play around with that and give us your feedback on, on what you think um, there. Okay, so now we're gonna also, let's just budget that as well. 
now we're going to go over to the selections workspace. Not that you can't pull the selections from here. You definitely can. You can click option. You can pull from your library here, uh, you know, very easily. Now I have an option. Great. There's an option there. Um, but the selections workspace is a nice place to kind of look at all the things on your project that need to be sourced and need to be, um, you know, approved and all of that. So this is where your team can start to work on pulling things in. And you'll notice here that it says $0 on the things we didn't estimate. This is why it's really important to set those budgets or estimates up front, because as your team is sourcing things, you want them to kind of have those guidelines as they start to pull things. Um, so I'm just gonna pull in a few options. Um, and you'll notice because I picked chandelier, because I knew chandelier was an electrical in my scope, it's gonna drop me into my library under electrical. So that just helps me if I have my project organized, um, it just helps me very easily put things where they need to go. Material is going to assist you in knowing, you know, okay, you're pulling an electrical item. We're going to drop you into the electrical category in the library. So that's the benefit of having a really organized system. You're able to move a lot faster because we know where things are going. So when you go to clip things, make sure you clip them into the right categories um, and even subgroups that you've created so that it makes your team's life easier. Okay, we're going to pull in um, a few items here as well. And I want to, um, I want to show you what it's like to, to invoice. Um, okay. All right. Before we jump into actually getting approval on our product, I know there was a question about invoicing and starting a project. So without knowing how any of you are uh, for sure operating, a lot of designers are going to take a retainer at the beginning. So we'll go through that really quickly. So we're going to come to our finances tab and then invoicing is the first tab you'll be dropped into. I'm going to go ahead and hit new retainer um, and I'm going to, oh, I don't have a client on my project yet. So I'm going to add one. Um, all right. I'm going to title this, maybe I'll call it the design retainer. And then this is where I'm going to add in. Um, oh, I'll just delete that. All right. I'm going to add in starting amount. Now you'll have ways to calculate how much you want to collect at the beginning, but I'm going to add this in because truly before my team starts working on a project and before they start investing in concepts, before they start investing in even spelling out what the project really is going to be, most of the time designers are going to be sending a design agreement and collecting some sort of fee or retainer at the beginning. So I'm going to send this over. We do have uh, something called Materio Pay, which allows you to get paid online. You'll notice I have some options down here to be collect card payments or ACH payments, clients covering the fees optionally. So just know that if you're new to Materio, we do have Materio Pay, and it is a great way to just make everything happen in one place. Um, and if you have QuickBooks online, we do have a QuickBooks integration and the sync works really well. So we're gonna send over this retainer. Um, your client's gonna get an email. You actually don't have to have your client on the project yet um, to send them an invoice. You'll notice that I, I looked up that client and I sent them the retainer, um, but they're not on the project because I don't really want them on the project yet because I'm not quite ready to present to them. So you can still send them an invoice. You know, if they're in your client contact list, you can still send them um, a bill. Um, and for the sake of this, I'm just gonna make mark this as paid. And uh, we'll just say that they wrote me a check for this and you can send payment confirmation if you'd like. So now I have a retainer. That retainer is paid. I have $40,000 retainer available. So I feel very secure in moving forward with my project. Um, I feel very secure that I have some funds in, in, and that my client's not going to walk away and I'm not getting paid for this. All right. So that's the first type of invoice. Now, the second would be we are, we've built out our entire proposal here. We have lots of line items here. We're, we're kind of ready to go. We want our client to sign off on this. You may or may not have products selected at this point. I always encourage budgeting, not sourcing any product products, not looking for specifics until you've got that budget sign off, signed off on. So once we have numbers in here, and I'll just throw in a few so that we, you know, have some numbers to send over. Um, Let's say we've got all of our line items with a budget. We have a total. We are ready to get confirmation before we really start moving into con uh, concepts and sourcing products. We're going to hit share and we're going to actually send a contract. So we're going to hit send contract and I'm going to add in that client again. 
again, they don't actually have to be on the project yet. Um, but what it's going to do is it's going to spell out everything here on my project, what I've estimated the total to be. Now you can uh, you can do per category and you can even hide selection allowances and you can even present it by location. So you could go, okay, I want to lump it by the half bath, the kitchen, you know, all the locations because that's how my clients are thinking. And then I'm going to send it over. Now you can also uh, um, add in here your contract terms, and these will be standard across your projects. They'll stay there. But this is going to be all of your legal terms, basically your contract, right? You want to put that in here, and then you're going to send it over. You're going to sign it first, send it over, and your client's going to get a copy to sign. Once they sign it, it'll be saved here. They're going to get a copy. You're going to get a copy. And so then you feel even more confident that now we've agreed on the budget, we collected our retainer and we are really, really ready to start working on this project. So in 30 minutes, we are not going to get into uh, the depths of what comes next, but I feel like this is a really great start of how you should, you know, make sure you're starting a project, you're estimating and budgeting, you're uploading some initial documents or photos, you are sending a retainer, and then we are now going to invoice for our uh, first amount, a uh, bit of time and product. Now, it's pretty untraditional in the design world to invoice for anything until you have a product. Um, I'm here to say that I think you, with Materio, you can invoice a little bit earlier if you'd like, and that just means that once you have product approved, your procurement can happen much faster. Um, but we'll do a speed session on how we would invoice. So let's just say that we have um, some of these options were approved. We're going to go in and approve them on our end for this case. Um, we'll just approve this one. Um, and you can actually can do this from here. You would normally send these over to your client. I need to actually invite my client because I keep not actually inviting him to the project. This is actually me inviting him. So the first time that you go to send the selections, it's that's the moment where you actually do need to invite the client to have, you know, an account in Materio. Um, you can customize their pricing visibility and their collaboration settings. Just know the defaults are, you know, should be good to go. But if you want to show them the timeline, you can turn that on. Um, you know, if you want to eliminate some of the notifications that they're going to get, you can customize that. And of course, you can customize the message as well. So we're going to send that over and I'm going to show you sending selections. It looks like I'm missing markup. This is another thing material is going to let you know and really kind of warn you when you are sending products that don't have a markup and it's going to even give you a second warning. So these are over. My clients have gotten them and we're going to approve some things so that we can send an invoice. Again, you can always send an invoice before things are approved, but I think this is what makes logical sense uh, for you guys. Okay. So we have some products. Uh, well, let's look over here in the confirm space. We have some products. They are approved. They are not paid yet. We need to collect money on these before we go and um, order them. Also, I apologize if you can hear there's some yard work happening outside, apparently. Um, OK, so we are going to go to finances. We're going to go to new and we're going to go to invoice. Now, I would discuss with your accountant whether your accountant wants you to do a deposit or an invoice. I don't want to bore you guys with financial things right now, but deposits um, are not going to officially like hit your books. Invoice is. So a lot of designers are going to collect a deposit on an item. And then when it's installed, especially with like furniture and things, then they will do the final invoice. So we'll do that. We'll do a deposit. And we're going to add in the items. Now you'll see here, everything in my scope of work is showing up, right? Approved things, not approved things. So we're actually going to filter down to selected. And then we're going to add in just the things that were approved. And we're going to hit next. We're going to choose how much of this we want to collect. A lot of people like to collect 100%, especially if, again, if we're doing any kind of like custom furniture or anything, we're going to add in 100%. And then we're going to send this over. You can title it, you know, uh, deposit, and then you can send this over, put your legal terms in here and hit send. Um, so now we have a deposit sent. And actually, in this case, I want to apply payment using the retainer or credit. So I can, in fact, use some or all of that. So maybe I actually only want to apply like $10,000 from the retainer. And then I want my client to pay the remainder. So I'm basically taking a little bit from my retainer, but I want them to pay because I want to keep some retainer as I continue. So we'll request the balance of that and send it over. And then let's just say, uh, if they paid with material pay, it would just automatically say it's paid, it would let you know. 
we will say that they also, you know, did an ACH payment directly and save that payment. So now that is paid. And if we head over to our selections workspace, we can now see that these items are paid, right? So Material is gonna do all that tracking for you. It's gonna be item by item. Where is it at? Is it paid, et cetera? Um, okay, this is really just the surface of getting into, uh, getting into invoicing. But the thing I want you to remember as you're getting started in Material is that um, organization, is key. Making sure that you're organized. This system is going to give you a place to uh, just organize the mess out of your project, right? We are going to streamline things by putting them in the right place. We want to make sure that they're in a category, um, that they're in a location, um, and we want to make sure that the items are, are named. And these are general names, right? Toilet, bathroom sink. These aren't like the Kohler 747 sink, faucet, this thing, right? These are, we know we need a toilet. It's going into the project. So think in big general terms when you're adding in, what do I need? Where are things going? Am I going to put art here? Am I going to put a rug here? You know, tagging the plans while you're sort of thinking about the scope. Then we're going to budget. We're going to send over that massive budget of all the things we've accumulated on the project. We're going to look really good to our clients. We're going to send that over via contract get that signed. Then we're going to dive into actually sourcing things, actually, you know, starting to build out concepts. Now you might need to build out some mood boards and concepts, you know, before you send a contract, you can do that how you wish. But before we really get into the bulk of sourcing, we want to make sure that we are um, really being explicit about what it is. Now, before we hop off, because there's so much more to learn, I did want to share that you absolutely can come in and uh, build boards. And look, Material is so smart. It's telling me that my timer is running on another project. You're right. I should stop that because I'm not working on that project anymore. Um, so it's uh, you can build boards here. You can, like I built this one out. Let's just go in and look. This is made up of items from my library. And here I'm trying to kind of create a pseudo render of what this room might look like. I'm using the background tool to kind of mimic a paint color. And so just know that you can create those concepts and material and you can pull in all of those images uh, from your library. You can use what's in your library here and you can place them in and, and kind of stage them as you wish. So just know that that's there. And then later down the line, we didn't get in this in today's uh, training, but if you watch the YouTube video on boards, it goes through a few scenarios of how you can use boards. And one of those is actually, once we start to pull in product, we're gonna create a product board. And that's actually gonna be linked to, um, to the selections in our project. And that's a great way to share those with clients and get approval. So I have crammed a lot in here. I have talked nonstop. Um, I think we'll leave it at that today. If you have questions following this, please reach out to our support team at hello at material.co. Uh, we will put these, uh, we put all of our demos usually on the YouTube channel. So check out the YouTube channel so that you can rewatch this. Um, and then also just see what's new. As we make big updates to the system, we try to get videos on there as fast as we can. So again, if you have questions on your dashboard in the bottom right here is a little chat bubble. Sometimes you have to click it twice, uh, but that is where you can live chat with our team during normal business hours. And then if you um, haven't subscribed yet, reach out to hello at material.co with questions. If you have subscribed, reach out to your success manager and let them know if you have any questions or goals. All right, everybody, this has been really fun. Thank you for joining me today. Um, and I hope you all enjoy material. Bye.